There was a skip in my step. A merry tune was stuck in my head on repeat. And for once, I didn't mind it. It was as if all the weariness and exhaustion that I've been carrying for the last few years had been lifted off my shoulders. There was a spark in my eyes and a permanent semi-smile glued to my face. I felt like Atlas, passing off the heavens to Hercules so he could frolic in Hera's garden for a day. I woke up that morning before my alarm went off, skipping to the bathroom for a quick shower before taking the extra time to make myself a good, hearty breakfast. Two fried eggs, sunny side up, with some golden brown, buttered toast and the side of crispy bacon. After wolfing down the lot, I got dressed in my absolute finest, making extra sure that not a single strand of hair was out of place, nor a single wrinkle marred my impeccable suit. I slipped out the front door, merrily greeting everyone I passed as I made my way to work. A warm hello to the lady in the yellow jacket as she passed by me in a hurry. A handful of dollar bills to the beggar in the corner, followed by a warm handshake as he thanked me kindly. A curt but friendly nod in the direction of the man on the train in the brown coat, absorbed in his newspaper, but for the moment when my whistling caught his attention. I was walking on a cloud, the world passing by in eye-shattering clarity. The colours were sharper, the air sweeter, and the people friendlier. Out of the train and through the front door of the office, taking the time to appreciate the bright, warm sky and crisp, chilly weather, I gave a warm welcome to Ali, our receptionist, and a firm handshake to my boss with a merry, good morning. I spent the rest of my day behind the monitor, finishing off every last report that has been sitting on my desk for the last few days, waving goodbye and wishing a good night to those last people out. I locked the door as I left, the moon hanging high in the air as I made my way back home. Today was the day. I felt the anxiety rise up as I got closer to home, nervous energy shooting through my veins and making me impatient as the train pulled into the station. I clenched and unclenched my fists as I hopped off the platform, the floor feeling more springy as I took the stairs two, sometimes three at a time. Feeling like a kid on Christmas, I bounded down the street towards home, the street lights lighting my path and my footsteps clacking merrily against the sidewalk. I pulled out my key and unlocked the door, feeling each tumbler fall into its groove as it gave a satisfying click. I pushed the door open and shut it behind me. The usual crushing silence of my apartment, now comforting, welcoming me back. I took off my jacket hanging it neatly on the hook by the door. I felt its clean, rigid fabric slide over my fingertips as I dusted it off and smoothed out any wrinkles. I took off my tie, taking care not to wrinkle or crease it as I pulled it out of its sharp, crisp knot and wrapped it around the jacket. I made my way to the kitchen, flicking the lights on throughout the house as I went in. Warm, golden light spilled down upon the spotless, polished countertops as I hummed a merry tune. My hand pulled the fridge door open, the cold air inside spilling over me as I grabbed the last beer and cracked it open. After taking a deep, satisfying sip and ensuring that the rest of the fridge was empty and clean, I closed it back up and made my way upstairs to the attic. My every footstep seemed to ring out at me the creak of the stairs invasive and oppressive in the silence. I took another gulp as I felt my anxiety spill out, my heartbeat springing out of my chest and resting in my throat. I rose up over the last step, the large, olden-style round window spilling moonlight over the otherwise dark, empty, dreary attic. I stood at the precipice, sipping away my nervous energy as I gazed through my last salvation. With a long sigh, hanging from the rafters, swaying gently on an invisible breeze, was the sturdy, 
nylon noose. The tarp I'd laid down underneath it crinkled as I stepped onto it, my feet laden in lead and my heart growing heavier as I got closer. I pulled out the chair from underneath it and sat down heavily, sipping my beer as I gazed through the small but impossibly large hole. It absorbed my focus. The crisp lines of the frayed fabric laid out in sharp clarity. The corners of my vision grew blurry as tears came unbiden into my face, spilling down my face in warm rivulets as I let out a few heavy sobs. My chest rose and fell rapidly as my heart slowly sank back down to my feet. Memories flitted through my mind. The loneliness I've suffered, the constant wariness, the self-inflicted isolation, all the opportunities I've been given and squandered, all the opportunities I've missed, all the pain and suffering, the endless suffering. I let all the memories flow over me, all the feelings that brought me here wash through me, leaving me a hollow shell. After a few more swigs, the tears no longer flowed, and my breathing returned to normal. A cold numbness settled over me. I placed the empty can gently on the floor as I stood up on stiff legs. I took a deep breath, my body growing cold as I pulled the chair back in place. With a heavy step, I placed my left foot firmly on top of it. The noose swayed above me. Such a simple object. I stepped up. Time seemed to lose meaning as I stood there, the noose swaying so closely that I could count the individual weaves. The light spilling through the window seemed oppressive, almost too bright, as I gripped its harsh fabric with shaking hands. With a slow, calculated care, I slipped it around my neck. It dug uncomfortably into my skin, and I spent some time trying to make it more comfortable, until I realized that it won't matter soon enough. With nothing left to do, I stood there, frozen, gazing out the window at the yard beyond as I double-checked everything. The fridge was cleared of anything that could spoil, and the trash was taken out already. The tarp will catch any mess, and no one will see me from the streets. Satisfied that everything was taken care of, I felt a warmth spread through me, my thoughts going quiet as my muscles tensed up, waiting for the moment. There was nothing left to do. I pushed off the chair. I felt the sharp pull of the rope, heard the dull snap of it clinching tight around the rafter, and felt as my airway was painfully blocked off. Adrenaline surged through me, and my fingers weakly grasped at my throat as my instincts screamed at me to stop, stop, stop. Panic took over as my brain fought against its imminent end, before I wrestled back control and calmed my twitching. Numb fingers forcing them to hang limply at my side once more. I hung there, my legs growing painfully numb, as I felt my breath run out. My vision began to blur, the edges growing out of focus until I could barely see the outline of the window. My tongue stopped fitting comfortably in my mouth, and my eyes seemed to bulge as the outline of it became a bright shape. As I lost sense of where my legs were, the dead weight dangling underneath me, I watched as darkness slowly crept in my ears filling with white noise. It started as a small band on the very outside of my vision, a piercing darkness punctuated by white noise. I hung there, the control I had over my body long lost to me. I watched as it grew larger, filling in towards the center. I felt the warmth drain out of me, leaving me cold and alone as I watched. At first, it looked like a random jumble, just my brain's weak attempt 
at trying to make out something familiar in the unfamiliar darkness. I watched with mute interest as they shifted about, some darting out of vision, while others stayed solidly in place. Some seemed lighter than others, while others seemed broken up and incomplete. But as it grew darker, they gained more clarity. It looked like a bundle of lines, brilliant, white and still. As the darkness grew, I could make out finer details. The joints and impressions, the cracks and points, the twisted shape of a finger. I watched in mute horror, my tongue growing heavy in my mouth as the hand came into view. Then, ahead, something moved into view, its movements jerky and slow, as if every movement caused it pain. I mutely watched it as it moved away from sight. Their bodies were brilliant white, almost blinding against the black background, except for where the skin cracked completely through and exposed the darkness beyond. Their skin flaked off of them in bits and pieces, breaking off and drifting downwards to rest against the ground or to float aimlessly through the air. Their shoulders were impossibly narrow, their bony arms hanging well below their knees and their heads ridiculously small, completely smooth and hairless. As they moved, I could hear the sharp, deafening crack of their skin and bones as whole sections slew off their bodies. As I watched them lumber on the edge of my vision, the window in front of me grew brighter. My heartbeat slowed, but dumb, but dumb. The window shrank further, but dumb, but. I saw it staring at me, its face flat and featureless, eyes nothing but dark points of light. It was standing where the window had been, staring at me, close enough for me to touch. Its jaw stretched open, the skin growing taut and splitting with a sickening wretch as it edged closer to me. It stretched its hand out, the fingers knotted and gnarled, the crack of its joints echoing painfully through my skull as it edged closer. Its chest raised up, the skin breaking apart as it stretched taut, as it let out a scream. The horrible, sickening cry drowned over me as its chest slowly fell. The sound picked up and repeated by the others as they all turned towards me. Their mouthless faces hung taut as their hollow eyes drilled into me. A loud crack rang through my skull as its finger bent to touch my face. The screaming grew louder. Another crack painfully rang through my teeth as its hand closed around my head. My heart beat faintly as the darkness closed in further. Bah! Its grip tightened, sealing painfully around me as its face inched even closer to mine. Dumb. I heard a snap. I felt something shift as my body fell from the thing's grasp. I felt my head snap back, my vision exploding in white before fading slowly back to darkness as I laid uselessly on the floor. The creatures were gone. I took a tiny breath, the air barely passing through my swollen throat as the darkness began to recede once again. My heartbeat sped back up as I lay on my attic floor, wheezing for breath, the noose hanging uselessly around my neck. After an eternity, my vision became less blurry. I began regaining feeling in my body once again. My legs painfully collapsed underneath me, and my head splitting with every heartbeat. I stared up at the rafters for a long time, dust motes falling down and landing on my face. As I watched, the other end of the rope swayed gently in the invisible breeze. 
the rope had snapped. <laughs>